Welcome everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Uh, this is day 19 of the tip of the day. Welcome. So uh, today I wanted to um, read an excerpt from uh, Nature or Personal Reality and then uh, talk about something that is um, that kind of revolves around limiting beliefs. And this excerpt also deals with um, or talks about how our uh, thoughts form our reality. So it, it was something that I really loved. Um, it is, um, you know, where we say our personality is co-creating our personal reality. That's what Dr. Joe says. I've heard Abraham Hicks say the same thing as well. So uh, this is what nature of personal reality says. You form the fabric of your experience through your own beliefs and expectations. These personal ideas about yourself and the nature of reality will affect your thoughts and emotions. You take your beliefs about reality as truth and often do not question them. They seem self-explanatory. They appear in your mind as statements of fact far too obvious for examination. Therefore, they are accepted without question too often. They are not recognized as beliefs about reality, but are, are instead considered characteristics of reality itself. Frequently, such ideas appear indisputable, so a part of you that it does not occur to you to speculate about their validity. They become invisible assumptions, but they nevertheless color and form your personal experience. Some people, for example, do not question their religious beliefs, but accept them as fact. Others find it comparatively easy to recognize such inner assumptions when they appear in a religious context, but are quite blind to them in other areas. It is far simpler to recognize your own beliefs in regard to religion, politics, or similar subjects than it is to pinpoint your deepest beliefs about yourself and who and what you are, particularly in relationship with your own life. Many individuals are completely blind to their own beliefs about themselves and the nature of reality. Your own conscious thoughts will give you ex excellent clues. Often you will find yourself refusing to accept certain thoughts that come to your mind because they conflict with other usually accepted ideas. Your conscious mind is always trying to give you a clear picture, but you often allow preconceived ideas to block out this intelligence. This comes from The Nature of Personal Reality by Jane Roberts, and it's in chapter two. Now, one of the things that uh, I wanted to pinpoint here is where uh, Seth says, this is a channel teaching. Uh, Jane Roberts is channeling this entity called Seth. And uh, Seth is talking about your conscious mind is always trying to give you a clear picture, but you often allow preconceived ideas to block out this intelligence. This is like the most important pointer in this whole um, passage. Leave alone the fact that uh, where he says we do not question our beliefs we do not question we so accept like um you, you can generationally see like if uh for generations a great grandfather was a republican the grandfather is a republican the father is a republican the son is a republican and the grandson is republican they don't question the political belief they don't question the religious belief right and it is just a thought Belief is a thought that is uh, taught over and over again. And the reason why I'm so passionate about uh, limiting beliefs is I have realized that throughout my life, the reason if I attracted any kind of abundance in my life, it was once I dissolved, uh, I can see the uh, uh, quantum leap that I dissolved the limiting belief. And because of the dissolution, I made a quantum jump and um, there was something totally different that manifested in my life. And so I want that for all of you as well, that you question your limiting beliefs, right? And uh, so he talks about that our conscious mind 
is constantly giving us clues, but we um, we don't question our conscious mind. And um, similarly, um, even um, Abraham Hicks talks about this wobble. You know, we flip flop between the way, um, and this is why Eckhart's teachings are so important. Is we need to realize how our ego operates because the ego will say, "Oh, no, 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 that's not true. Uh, that's why. That's why these things need to happen, right?" It will come up with a justification. So realize that it is really, really important that we actually invest our time in an awareness practice. If you, you know, if you think that you don't need 20 minutes of meditation, you actually need an hour of meditation or two hours of meditation or stillness practice or some kind of Qigong practice or yoga practice, some kind of stillness practice, right? Like, like Vipassana or Kundalini yoga. There's so many different methods, but do invest your time in a presence practice. The whole reason why I read this passage is to show that even in a book that was written in 1972, the pointer is that our inner being, our consciousness is constantly giving us clues as to what direction we need to go to, but we don't question, we don't silent um, our mind down enough to listen to the inner voice, to the voice of our heart. So. That's my pointer for today. I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday and I'm back from holiday into a kind of normal schedule or still enjoying time with your uh, friends and family and uh, continue to enjoy your time. I hope this helps. This is the pointer that uh, watch when your mind flip flops or uh, what, when it has that wobble, right? Watch the wobble. The moment the wobble enters, that means our ego has entered and the mind activity is higher. And once the mind activity is higher, then um, we are at the mercy of conditioned patterns. We are back in that cycle, karmic cycle, right? So we want to get out of the karmic cycle. So with that, have a spectacular day. Much love, many blessings. Bye.